Hi everybody. Finally, this is the end. Both for the mid-engine R8 supercar and Audi's 5.2 liter V10 Screamer, as well as V10S in general. This limited edition R8 GT, which sits alongside the rest of the R8 Coupe and Spider lineup, appears to be the final model year, which is 2023. The R8 GT, on the other hand, will not sour the mood like the previous group of words did. It's easy to drive and easy to control with the throttle. Moving throughout a corner, we could rapidly put it right at the restriction of the backside's footing, where adding a touch more power made the back end step out. Jokingly, never in a scary way. The gated manual transmission from the first generation R8 is still something we miss, but the 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission in the GT shifts even more quickly than before. carbon fiber and aluminum monocoque structure resonates with the ferocious energy of a wide open throttle upshift at the 8700 rpm redline in its most aggressive modes. Only 333 GTS are being sold by Audi worldwide, with 150 coming to the United States. There will be 50 of each color red, gray, and black and one for each and every other Audi dealer. In point of fact, the R8 GT is the only R8 to get a new feature called Torque Rear. Audi officials claim that calling it drift mode would be too risky from a regulatory standpoint. Torque rear has 7 settings that increase the amount of rear wheel slip that can be allowed. It's more of a fun mode than a track tool, designed to make it harder for an inexperienced driver to go all Mustang exiting cars and coffee while still allowing for a fair amount of wheel spin. Adjust by turning a knob after clicking the new checkered flag button that has appeared on the steering wheel. Level 1 doesn't give you enough leeway to make a recognizable drift, and level 7 only reduces power a little. Torque rear, on the other hand, is not a spin preventer like Ferrari's side slip angle control. Ask us how we know. The GT is not entirely a car made of old parts, but it does use some parts from the other cars in the lineup. On other R8s, for instance, the front anti-roll bar made of carbon fiber costs $1,100. It saves 4.4 pounds and has the same stiffness as the bar it replaces. In addition, the GT receives the all-wheel drive models shorter gearing the 3rd through 7th ratios are reduced by 4% to 29% as well as the standard carbon ceramic brakes and bucket seats that are included in the $12,900 dynamic package on other R8s. As a result, American automobiles are slightly heavier than their European counterparts. Laser headlights, sport exhaust, dynamic steering, a BNO stereo, and carbon fiber mirror caps, door sills, and side blades are all included in the standard equipment. Despite this, the GT is said to be 55 pounds lighter than the standard rear wheel drive R8 and 120 pounds lighter than the all wheel drive coupe. Due to the absence of the particulate filters that are required on the market in Europe, US, 
Automobiles are even noisier as a result of the R8's weight loss and a reduction in sound deadening. The sweet escalating melodies of the V10 were always muffled by a helmet, so it was difficult to read the Eurospec cars we drove. It won't be able to accelerate as quickly as the all-wheel drive R8, a quarter mile flat around 11 miles per hour and a time of 60 miles per hour should be expected. The GT's bucket seats with fixed backs are comfortable for their genre, they are neither concave nor do they have steep bolsters around the perimeter. They still have a manual fore aft and power height adjustment. However, this seems to fit with the R8's more daily drivable vibe, which includes a luggage shelf behind the front seats, as opposed to the Lamborghini Huracan, which is a corporate car that is constantly manic. Talking about which, the GT is comparable in idea to the back-drive Huracan Technica. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment below and let us know what you thought of the video. We'll see you in the next one.